Good day folks, welcome back to Ed's Garage at Merton Hyundai. So, today I'm doing something a little bit different. So you've decided to get an EV. Alright, well, Hyundai makes two EVs currently, with another one coming up pretty soon called the Ionic 5. Check that out as well. Uh, but currently we have the Kona Electric and the Ionic Electric. So two very, very different vehicles and very different ranges as well. Of course, the Ionic has a range of 274 kilometers on average and the Kona 415 kilometers on average. Now, if you're looking at both options, that's good because quite frankly, the Ionic could be better for you even though it's got the shorter range. So ask yourself, how far do you drive on a regular basis? If it's less than a couple hundred kilometers, nine times out of 10, then chances are the Ionic is the better vehicle for you. Personally, I went with the Ionic because of that reason. On a longer trip, in most markets, there are a lot of EV fast chargers. Check out the app PlugShare uh, to see what I'm talking about. Make sure you narrow down the connectors to CCS. Those are the two that, or that's the style that these two vehicles use. Um, you'll find that they're everywhere. Okay, so let's get a look at these two vehicles. Now, I do have a tape measure with me, so I'm going to show you a couple things. Now, a lot of people will come in and look at the Kona specifically because it's a subcompact SUV. Um, of the two, of course, it's the only one that is considered an SUV. This is considered a hatchback, the Ionic. Okay, so again, a lot of you may look at the Ionic and think, okay, that's a, uh, a sedan. Well, it isn't because when we open up the back, you'll see the window actually comes up with the trunk. So that is considered a hatchback. So it's almost a fastback because it's a very, very raked window. Now have a look at the trunk space in the back here. Now let's have a look at the trunk space in the back of the Kona. All right. So now at first glance, on the outside of the vehicle, the Kona does potentially look bigger because it is considered a subcompact SUV and it's a little bit taller. I mean, it is higher off the ground. But let's have a look at the trunk space. Okay. All right, so from seat back to the very, very back of the bumper here, so 35 inches by about, okay, it's not gonna be perfect, but about 40 inches. So 35 by 40 in the back of the Ionic. Now, one of the benefits of the Kona, you'll notice that the floor is the same height as the bumper here, or at least the back of the hatch opening. It does make it a little bit easier to slide larger objects in and out of the vehicle. So where the Ionic was 35, this one is about 28, okay? And as far as width goes, we're looking at about the same, about 40 inches. So there is more trunk space in the back of the Ionic. The Ionic has about um, four cubic feet more uh, space in the back of the vehicle behind the rear seats. So, what about another comparison? How about the interior volume for passengers? Let's have a look at the width of the back seat. So the width of the back seat is about 53 inches. Okay, let's check out the Kona. And the width is about 50 inches. So the width of the back seat is actually three inches larger on the Ionic. So guys, the Ionic is the bigger vehicle out of the two, and I'm going to demonstrate that now with my seating position. So now I'm six foot two. Let's put the front seat where I would drive it. So we're going to start with the Ionic. So right about there is probably good. Now I've got a few inches of room above my head. Now I can also raise the seat if if need be. All right, with the seat all the way up, I still have a couple of inches above my head, all right? I probably wouldn't have the seat this far up, but it just gives you a good, a good idea. Um, good leg room, I can actually move the seat back further if I need to, but that's actually too far, it becomes uncomfortable at that point, so I'd probably have it right about there. Okay, let's check the back seat of the Ionic now. All right, so I've got about two inches in front of my knees here, and if I sit straight up, I can actually touch the roof with my head. Now if I sit relaxed with the center cup holder armrest down, it's fine. So if I'm relaxed, I have about an inch above my head here. You can 
see that better than I can. Now, so if I really, really sit like straight up, I can I can hit my head there. But nobody really sits like that. <laughs> Very few people sit like that. This is how I would normally be sitting, and you can see the head's not hitting. Six foot two. Uh, I'm about a 50-50 split here. I'm not long-legged or long torso I'm pretty much right in the middle. Okay, let's go check out the Kona now. All right, so first we'll check out the front seat. All right, so, right, okay, this is quite comfortable, but I'm going to go a little bit forward. I'm going to give the Kona the best possible chance. Get my knees bent similar to what I had in the Ionic. Okay, and I'm going to raise the seat all the way. <laughs> I think the seat might go up a little bit higher. Okay, there we go. So now I've got a few inches above my head. That's probably pretty close to the same as the Ionic. And now I'm actually a little bit less comfortable. I'm going to move back just a touch. Okay, right there. All right, let's check out the back seat. Okay, right away I notice a difference. Check this out. So, a couple things. A, my knees are up against the back of the seat and my legs are not touching the bottom of the seat right here. Now let's put out the armrest, get comfortable. Okay, so I've got about an inch above my head. That's actually pretty similar. Now if I really stretch out, I cannot touch the roof in this one. So the roof is definitely higher in this one. Um, but as you can see, the leg room, knee room, not as good. So. If you've got taller children, so for me personally, I have a six foot one son, I am six foot two, it works better in the Ionic. All right, let's check out some of the other differences. So that's that's the interior space. So the trunk space is bigger in the Ionic. The leg room and body width, I guess you could say, the, the hip room is better in the front and the rear seats uh, of the Ionic as well. So where does the Kona come into play as far as a little bit better. Well, obviously it's got the better range um, and the trunk is more usable if you're loading in larger, heavier items. You can also drop the trunk down to get a little bit extra height, just like that. Um, so that's kind of cool. You've got the, uh, the cover that's uh, removable there. So when you put the seats down, you take the cover out, you can put larger items in there. Um, however, the Ionic will still have more total space. Now, of course, this one doesn't have a droppable floor, but there is a little bit of storage space underneath. So still very usable back here as well. Arguably more usable than the Kona because it's not every day you have a, an item that's going to be touching the roof of your Ionic or your Kona. Okay, so let's check out some of the features now. So we're going to start at the front of both vehicles. Okay, so on the front of the Ionic, you get this... Um, this beautiful sort of new thing I got in the front here. It's not really a grill, is it? It's got the uh, little um, air uh, passageways here when the vehicle is cooling. Uh, active shutters, sorry, I couldn't come up with the right word. They're the active shutters that open up when the uh, battery and the motor need a bit of extra cooling. Of course, it's got the front-facing radar system and the front-facing camera system. That's for the autonomous braking and the lane keep assist functionality. You've got the dual LED daytime running lights and a projection headlight. Now that is a halogen headlight on that vehicle. All right, let's check out the front of the Kona. So on the front of the Kona, uh, again, no grill. Uh, it's actually all integrated into the bumper. It does have the port for charging on the front. For the Ionic, the port to charge is on the driver's side on the back. Now, depending on who you are, you may like it on the front, you may like it on the side. Personally prefer it on the side because the front of the car can get quite dirty, uh, especially in the snowy weather, so that's why I prefer mine on the side of the vehicle. Uh, this also has an active shutter system, but it's hidden inside the grill or behind the, the, uh, the bumper fascia there, uh, so you can't actually see that, and that's fine. We do also have the forward-facing radar in this one right here and the forward-facing camera, again, for the lane keep assist and autonomous emergency braking. You've got LED running lights. You have projection headlights. Um, they both have the air curtain pass-through, so you can see the air curtain pass-through there and, of course, on the side for the Ionic as well. That, of course, reduces overall drag and increases efficiency. Now, with the Kona, you do get marker lights on the mirrors. By the way, I mean, we are looking at the preferred trims in both, so equal equal uh, package 
levels here. So marker lights on the mirrors and blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. On the Ionic, neither of those things, okay? So you do lose that on the Ionic in the preferred trim. In the Ultimate trim, of course, you will be able to get that on the Ionic. And something to consider, guys, is that in the Ionic, you can get the Ultimate trim for about the same price as the preferred trim on the Kona. Because the Kona has a larger battery, it's going to cost significantly more. So it's a 64 kilowatt battery in the Kona and a 38 kilowatt battery on the Ionic. So wheels and tires. So this is a 17 inch aluminum alloy rim and it's wrapped with Nexon tires. So they're not bad. They do the job. They are mud and snow rated tire. And the rim is the rim. I gotta say, the rims and tires on the Ionic are significantly better. They're a little bit smaller. They're a 16 inch. And it, but it is a much nicer aluminum alloy rim, at least that's my opinion anyway. And it's Michelin tires on these. So you got Michelin tires versus Nexon tires. Slightly smaller, but a nicer look. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the interior features. So first off, in the back on the Ionic, you do get the folding cup holder armrest. And that's it. <laughs> okay. There is a nice solid back on the seats and you got a pocket in the passenger side. So again, if you want more features, of course, look at the ultimate trims on both, but we're looking at the preferred trims because we're looking, basically we're looking at semi-affordable or affordable electric vehicles, okay? Um, again, if you're not driving more than 200 kilometers per day, I highly recommend the Ionic. It is a bigger vehicle, so it's also got a longer wheelbase, gonna be a little bit more uh, smooth on the road as well. Okay, having a look at the back here. So basically the same thing, you've got plastic back seats, but on this one you do get two cargo nets, one on either side. So a little bit different there. Now they both have proximity entry. So while the Ionic didn't have the blind spot monitoring in the mirrors, and that basically looks like that, a couple things that it does have over and above the Kona uh, for one, it's got a much bigger screen. So this is a 7-inch touchscreen. This does, of course, include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both vehicles do have Blue Link. And, of course, you got the Blue Link buttons on the mirrors there. Both vehicles have automatic climate control with the driver-only mode. Both vehicles have the shift-by-wire transmission, which is a nice, safe system that actually puts the vehicle into park automatically when you shut the vehicle off or when you take your seatbelt off and open the driver's door, it'll quickly switch to park, which is pretty cool. Both vehicles have heated seats, they both have a heated steering wheel, they both have various drive modes and auto hold, and they both have, sorry, the Kona has backup sensors, the Ionic does not, so that is one of the differences. Having a look at the steering wheel, you've got adaptive cruise control on here, and of course you got the paddles on the back for multiple levels of regenerative braking. In the instrument cluster, you have a uh, center screen. Basically, that will change when you change the drive modes. So I'll try that. I'll have the different drive modes there. There you go. So that's what that looks like. And, of course, they both have the lane keep assist. We can see the button for that right there. All right, let's check out the Ionic. All right, inside the Ionic, you can see, as I mentioned, you do have the lane keep assist button right here. This one also has adaptive cruise, as I mentioned. However, what you do not see down here is rear parking sensors. So as I mentioned in the Kona, you got rear parking sensors. In this one, you don't. Now, while you do have a center screen that's very similar to the Kona, it is actually a little bit bigger, and it does change just like the Kona's. It's actually significantly bigger. So you can see it goes all the way across. That's about a 6-inch screen there. But check this out. The 10.25-inch screen that's in some of our newer vehicles is not in the Kona, so you do gain that beautiful screen. Touch sensitive buttons on the climate control system as well. And one last thing I forgot to mention, this one actually has the Harman Kardon audio system. Uh, you can see that on the speaker grills here on the door, which means it also has the subwoofer in the back. So you could probably already tell which of these two vehicles I personally prefer. It is definitely the Ionic. Um, it's got more space it's just more comfortable on the road. I find that the handling is a little bit better. I find the seats a little bit more comfortable in this vehicle, a little bit better back support. Uh, don't get me wrong, the Kona is great, but I think the, the Ionic is just a little bit better. 
Um, it's also got like the D-cut steering wheel, which is pretty cool here. You can see the bottom is flat. Uh, that's something that you don't get in the Kona either. Um, and even though it has a shorter range, it just, to me, it seems like a more usable vehicle. Both options are spectacular, but I'm really hoping that this video helped you make a decision uh, one way or another. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.